Uh, I am so ready to play with my slinky later. That's I wonderful. This, I got this plastic slinky. I uh, see that. I won yes. it at pinballs. <laughs> I'm playing an arcade game, and it was it was a lot of fun. I beat Vanessa. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Vanessa is my girlfriend, and I, I beat her in a, a a rousing game of Mario Kart. Oh, Mario Kart. And okay. So it sent me over the top with tickets. Okay, that's and I won. Yeah, it was pretty a, great. It's a rainbow colored slinky. It's very pretty. It is very pretty. Thank you. Although it's plastic, you, you play so with it, later? it probably won't go downstairs. Probably not. You're welcome to play with it later. Thank you. you. I appreciate okay, that. Uh, Are you gonna bounce it downstairs like Ace Ventura? Mm. Yes, yes. We we could very well do that. Of course, he um, was he used he used a metal slinky though in that. Yeah, that's what all real people use. Okay. Metal. Yeah. So you're calling me not a real person? Yeah, plastic just does not work. It doesn't work as as well as interesting. Metal. Okay. I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna make a, I don't know, what's plastic? A plastic Almost fork. everything in our world, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna make a plastic fork out of metal, are you? That's, That's a stupid crazy. idea. Yeah, oh, what a what a fucking idiot. Uh, oh, hell. Let's let's get this thing going. Uh, I'm just I'm so tired of of bantering with you guys. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to another I'm episode not. of I Don't Give a Flick. I am your host, Johnny Blackburn. Alongside me this week, as always, is Gary Elmore. And Neil Riley. And Neil, the dead man walking Riley. Um, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I mean, half of the stuff that comes out of my mouth doesn't make any sense. It's just a terrible it thing, yeah. yeah. If you could it's cut your funny. conversation it's... down by like 50%, I think you'd be real successful. I think we, I think we actually, if, if I did that, we'd probably only have a 30-minute podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, talk for probably uh, about 60% of Many of our fans of have requested us to do that, actually. Have so, they? Yes, I feel like our fans are only... The five of us uh -huh. and my mom. I, I have literally gotten <laughs> dozens and dozens of letters begging us to do that. Are, were you one of the writers? <laughs> yes, of, of the all letter. Of them. Yes. Okay, you're one of ours. Perfect. Jerry, uh, did you get my letters in the mail? Yes, yes. There were, I appreciate you <laughs> taking the time to to cut the letters out from <laughs> magazines and newspapers. I mean, I had them already lying around, so yeah, might as well use that. You just, you just had a, had them lying around for a rainy day in case you ever needed to. Tell Johnny to shut the fuck up. Uh, can we or just a ransom note? Either way, yeah, it's all. <laughs> oh good. wow, okay. I love how you slipped that in there, real nonchalant. I like that. Um, can we just take a second to appreciate people writing letters and how how wonderful it is to just send a letter in the mail with a stamp and to then to receive that letter. I still appreciate that. I yeah. prefer you guys to send me letters as opposed to emails or texts. Yeah, I think really this whole show. Oh, I was about to say, are you sending letters to yourself? Because it sounds really appreciative of that. Currently, I am. Yeah. Yes. I, I think just, this whole show should just be retooled to talk about, you know, penmanship, calligraphy, uh, stamps. You I know, agree. The type of paper you use. Gary, what a very pleasantly wonderful Thank idea. You. Hello, it. and welcome to the Paper Hour. Here we discuss paper and all paper products. <laughs> <laughs> Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> True Dunder Mifflin welcome podcast. This week. Yeah. I sell paper and paper, paper accessories. accessories. <laughs> That's from a hit show called The show Kingdom just Hill. gets better and better every time. <laughs> How bored are we? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else going on. Oh, fuck it. Uh, this week we are uh, we're very happy to welcome back uh, Ian Webb, the co the uh, co host of the podcast Movies So Bad They're Good in right. the Facebook group. I did <laughs> Movies So Bad They're Good Midnight Cult Classics and Camp. Ian, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me again. I say that as both a recurring guest and as a fan. Um, I got to say uh, the episodes I haven't been in, I listen to you all a lot and I really enjoy it. Well, I enjoy really listening to that. it. I enjoy being part of it. Yeah. No, thank you for having me on. This is really fun. You know, I feel like that's the only way we're going to build our fan base is just by adding a bunch of people that are just like <laughs> yeah. random okay. people yeah. in the right. streets being like, you guys want to be on a podcast? Yeah. Talk about film. You don't know much about film? You can talk about your favorite movie. Yeah. Well, if, as long as you yes, listen to Yes, we have it. another listener. Well, listen to our podcast. I mean, you're going to have an audience pop, you know? <laughs> Wait, I have to listen to it? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> like, Johnny's got to come out with his own theme song playing. Everyone's oh. got to, like, just be just screaming at the top of the lungs. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we recently did add a, uh, a little... Uh, song at the end of uh, of the episodes. It's kind of like a funk song. We did. Yeah. We did. We did. Um, so. We actually, originally, for those of you that aren't familiar with 
our earlier episodes, we had a <laughs> basically a, a montage of our favorite iconic movie lines of all time, and we just made a mix-up of that to start and end the show, and apparently... Uh, Gary was telling yeah. me what ha- what happened. We got YouTube was not happy with that. Okay. We got um, flagged, yeah, we? and they wouldn't let me use it under Creative Commons. Okay. So I guess we weren't talking about those particular films. So yeah. well, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, and last but not least, I once again I, I don't know how this guy got an invitation to this episode, but. He's here, so I'll be a gracious host and introduce Jacob Johnson. He's the host of Reese and Jacob versus Evil. It's pretty good, not because no, of Jacob, I... but you know. Oh, and that's 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 a Reese. Because of Reese, yeah. <laughs> Jacob, I'm to- I'm totally kidding. So Jacob actually uh, told me some really interesting news. Jacob, you guys got a new a new fan who's actually quite popular with your latest episode. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, who uh, who who would that who would that be uh, for our listeners uh, out there for uh, and the name of the episode of the movie all discussed? Yeah, it was uh, an episode we did on the horror movie After Midnight. Mm-hmm. It was uh, co-directed by Christian Stella, and he also was the cinematographer on that film. And he just left us um, like a quick comment, just kind of talking about the background of some of the scenes in the movie, and then just like provided some feedback on us. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was really cool, and it was our singular comment. Ooh, del- okay, delightful. Yes, so, so congratulations. Did uh, because uh, you told me that Reese handles the back end audio work for that. So when he posts all of these, um, does <clears throat> does he tell you like does he how did how did the director find that? Was he just typing in keywords on Google one day, or did did was Reese able to ask him how exactly he found you guys? Uh, Reese did actually shoot him a response. Uh, we haven't gotten anything back, mm-hmm. uh, but we're assuming that he just kind of like most indie directors, surprisingly, uh, will actually like search themselves mm, um, okay. and search their, their films. Yeah. And so I think he was just like just looking for any reviews of After Midnight. I mean, it's like right. super small, but um, and it's on Shutter, seen, right? Uh, we watched it on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime okay. had it. OK. How, uh, how did you guys hear about it? Uh, well, it's from the uh, producers of of Spring, so it's oh. from the same production team as Spring, which is okay. a movie I adore, uh, and it's kind of in the same realm of romance horror, because mm-hmm. uh, the film basically revolves around a couple and sort of uh, relationship issues that they're kind of going through, and then like there's a little bit of supernatural kind of uh, happenings uh, surrounding the film, and I wanted to check it out, so we just did an episode on it, and uh, I really liked it. Reese, not so much. Uh, but then we got that comment and it was kind of cool uh, to see that the co-director had actually reached out and like he provided like he said, like the same guy who designed the, the creature in that movie was also the uh, same designer in uh, who did the Demon Knight film, the Tales from the Crypt film in the 90s, oh, okay. who did the demons in that, which was pretty cool. Oh, uh, yeah, it was really neat. Cool. So would you say that After Midnight was way better than hereditary since most movies are or what would you say uh, uh, you. that's an easy softball question john yeah. gary's like i haven't even seen after midnight yeah. but i can tell you it is five thousand hey, times better at than hereditary. least hereditary is more memorable than the name of your podcast right what it, what am i on again <laughs> oh, oh our wow. podcast is named after one of like the top seven lines in film history yeah, yeah. Frankly, my dear, I don't <laughs> give a flick. A flick, yes. Okay? I mean, right now, I don't give a fuck, okay? Whoa. Hey, whoa. 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 explicit filter on now. Yeah, we're going to have to like bleep that guy. out. Jeez. <laughs> Watch your fucking language, man. Do you know how That's long it would take to edit these episodes if I bleeped out all of the curse words? 24 hours? Yeah, it would, it would just, it just be one long bleep. <laughs> just fix it in post. Just, just, okay. just, no, you don't <laughs> just replace it with a tongue click from Hereditary. Just like... Oh God, no, no, no. That's all right. I will give. Them, I will give them that. That was the the one of the few scary or moments. Or you can that replace it with me. the uh, the gasps in uh, Midsummer. <gasps> no. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Johnny. Push up. Mm. Push up. Oh gosh. <laughs> you can do it. That was probably my favorite scene in the entire movie. That's great. I don't want to. <laughs> or just replace it with uh, Freddy Krueger's gratuitous bitch. You know, just bitch. Just over and over again. So basically, it'd be an hour long of of some like scary bitch. Terry from Rick and Morty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, guys, so this week we are going to go ahead and discuss huge explosions and gore fest and why we love them so much. Uh, this particular episode is going to be uh, based around 
basically how it sounds, basically what the yeah. title suggests, uh, is going to be uh, why we as moviegoers really love huge explosions, um, you know, gunfights, things like that, and Gorefest, which encapsul- encapsulates a, a fair amount of things, honestly, um, anywhere from torture porn to body horror to a myriad of different things. Uh, so we will we'll get right down to it. Um, I guess I just kind of want to kind of want to see here uh, before we jump in. What do you guys prefer? What do you guys prefer between the two um, when it comes to when it comes to explosions, when it comes to gore? What would you prefer to have in a film? And saying both or none is not is not an option. So you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. I'll so, go first. Uh, I like uh, huge explosions. I think those are fun to watch. Um, and, you know, I think uh, every little kid likes to see an explosion. And it really uh, generally will set the tone and cap off uh, whatever climax is happening at the moment in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just take a look at a movie like Commando that is basically one long explosion. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, I have to agree with Gary. I mean, to me personally, I, I like the explosions. Uh, you know, there's just something about it. Maybe it's just because I was in the military, but things going boom excites me. Okay. Good, Exc- good excites you how? No, no, that's good. Uh, sexually. Oh, God. No, oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was more abrupt than I thought. It, I thought yeah. you were going to dance around a little bit, make some sexual innuendos, but nice. I, Neil, that's why, that's why I love you. You're right to the point. Um, Jacob, how about you? Right to the tip. Right to the tip. <laughs> well, as a kid, like, uh, just explosions were, like, way more exciting, sure. um, especially if they were, like, a little bit more comical. But, like, the older I got, the more appreciative of the destructive nature of, of explosions uh-huh. uh, I became. So, like, movies like uh, Terminator 2 or, like, The Day After, it just, they kept getting scarier and it actually mm-hmm. made me, you know, question my own mortality and stuff like that. And so it's, like... I love I love the silly explosions, but I also love the big explosions. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, Ian, how about you? That, that's a good question. I, well, you already said I can't say both, but yeah, <laughs> I think in general, in, in general, I, I'd say explosions, but uh, okay. I mean, I do really love a good, like, puddle of blood in my movies, love a you fucking know. bloodbath there you go not gonna lie exactly it's entertaining as yeah. fuck and Johnny um, oh. go ahead Ian yeah uh, well I actually you know I, I like to really speak for everybody really explosions are really everybody's favorite uh, you, you know uh, actually know you know, uh, may, maybe think about something he said that he was in the army or military and uh, what was it enjoys things that go boom like that. That's really what uh, mostly Americans. I mean, other than Americans, but that's definitely a, a big American pastime is, is big explosions. Like Fourth, we love Fourth of July fireworks. Sure, absolutely, that, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, yeah you, you know, and uh, we love guns. We love shooting guns. I, I personally, I'm not really a gun fan, but if you if you give me a gun and put me and give me a target, I'll have the time of my life. I'm sure of it. Yeah, just get on a range. Uh, I mean, I uh, think a lot of the, yeah, if we exactly. look at a lot of big blockbusters too, a lot of them do very well internationally and typically the ones that do well internationally outside of most recent superhero films are, yeah, they're they're the big blockbuster action films, you know, and a lot of those are just completely full of the car chases and in particular the explosions and uh, the gunfights and stuff. Um, I, I, I personally, I'll, I guess I'll be the, the odd man out on this one. I, I do prefer gore in a movie. Um, I, I don't there. I do love a good explosion. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I love one of those, you know, one of the short close up lens shots with a guy walking away and the car or the building just erupting completely behind him. That's badass. I definitely get I get goosebumps for sure. Mm-hmm. But with the gore, it's just especially movies that are overly gory. It's just so ridiculous and it's so absurd just to see something like that because that would just it would never happen in real life and so i i more 
I guess I I appreciate it more along the lines of I find it to be I find it to be a little funny. Okay. You know, like, it's I'm just kind of like oh my exactly. god I can't believe that's happening like this is so unrealistic as, <laughs> as opposed to the explosion you know it's it's something that I mean hell I mean take a look at the the news from um, Beirut Lebanon today you know with that that yeah. factory going up um, it's it's the same thing those particular scenarios are more likely to happen than you know uh, a guy running through a ballroom with a lawnmower and grinding up 50 zombies and just seeing the blood <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, sounds like, that sounds familiar oh like does it movie. yeah yeah <laughs> our good friend we're Peter also thinking about gore Think about gore it's like way more imaginative right because you have oh, yeah. those kind of moments with like using a lawnmower as a weapon as you carve through zombies or like all the Nightmare on Elm Street films, like all the different scenarios you can create with just your imagination. And then the, right. the effects teams that work on those like intricate little like intestines and kidneys and stomachs in the gore. I think that's like, it, there's a lot more imagination in uh, gore for sure, which is Definitely. why. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with like, like in the comical nature of it too, like Mortal Kombat 11, as like the most over the top gore I've ever seen, like outside of film. Did you say? And I'm like, sorry. Did you say Mortal Kombat 11? The video yes, game. Yes, sir. Oh, the video game. <laughs> I thought you meant the movie. No, no. I was like, I thought they only made no. like one or two of those. That's why I said <laughs> it. They're way more successful but, than I thought. But if you watch any of those fatalities, they are so over the top. Like they put a lot of like even horror films to shame with some of their creativity and like gore implementation. And really. To talk about Mortal Kombat, you know, from their very inception, uh, they always were very creative with that. Because I mean, mm -hmm. even in the first Mortal Kombat, you could rip somebody's spine off. It's just or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sub Zero is fatality. Yeah, and I mean, like they've they've always been very. Um, which really caused a lot of uh, hubbub about violence in video games in the 90s for all of you kids who don't remember that. Um, you know, it, it, they've been always very, you know, creative, if uh, we want to use that yeah. word. Yeah. So something that I've always something that I've always wondered about is a lot of these movies that have not all of them, but I, I would say a, a good amount that have the large explosions that rely on not even just special effects necessarily, but that rely on the explosions and the gore fest, if you will, the bloodbaths. It seems like those are the ones, or at least they were at some point, those are the ones that make more money and are more profitable at theaters as opposed to a storyline that is really intense and character driven mm. and there's a very good plot and it thickens and it, it comes in waves. Yeah. Like um, Titanic hardly made any money, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a blood <laughs> man. <in> that <laughs> um, and if, if you look at it, 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 it seems like, you know, us as a society or us as film goers, you know, we typically, when we're thinking of, Hey, we're, you know, I'm bored. I want to mm. go see a movie this weekend or I want to go catch a movie with my friends or I need a, a date night idea or something. Um, a lot of times nowadays, you'll typically choose, well, for lack of better words, the shittier film. And it relies on those assets, I feel. Uh, feels like we, we, we covet that almost to entertain us a little bit more. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that, too, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think about that? I mean, do I have my head on my ass or is that? I don't know. Well, most certainly you do. But um, I mean, I, I think that, you know, you, there's a point to be made. I don't know if I'd say they were shittier films, but like they're uh, definitely like popcorn films. Like you're not going to uh, walk away from. Right. I'm going to go back to Commando because that's what's on my mind. But Great you're movie. not going to walk away from Commando and say, wow, that really, you know. I need to think about how this affects me, you know, in, yeah. a, in a deep and long lasting <laughs> the way. The depth you know. of Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> right. really got to me. I won't be able to sleep yeah, for a whole ex night. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, it's an entertainment film. And, uh, that's, you know, I, I think that movies with a lot of explosions and, you know, gun battles typically do like, you know, they're popcorn, you know, they're just there to have fun and go enjoy. And, you know, you, you've seen a lot like the John Wick movies have a lot of, you know, yeah. um, combat or in them that not so many explosions but you know they they're a little bit deeper than that you know yeah i think a lot of i think yeah if you want to go back to and we do love as a, as a whole i think we do love those those popcorn movies because you they're not terribly thought provoking a lot of people do go to the movies mm -hmm. just as a release from reality just for a couple hours yeah. to where they don't have to think much they can just forget about any worries or any troubles that they may be having and right. just sit there and just be mindless basically for two hours and yeah I can I can see where, where that would be where that would be pretty therapeutic um, 
and I guess what I what I meant is not not all not all action or horror films mm-hmm. I would say are saved by those. I'm, I mean, there are definitely a lot with great stories, and that have that have both. They mm-hmm. can have they can have both aspects and still be a good film. Um, I just feel with with a lot of them that they save themselves because of those effects that are added. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, and heck, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to, um, you know, Ian and I, we did an episode on his podcast a couple weeks ago on, um, on brain dead, Peter Jackson's film. And I think we briefly talked about it and that the storyline on that is, you know, storyline of the dialogue and the care, you know, it's not really there at all. Mm-hmm. It's an entertainment factor. You know, there's just a shit ton of blood and a lot of killing and a lot of body parts flying everywhere and everything is just completely ridiculous, but it's entertaining as hell. You yeah, know? It's, it's pretty absurd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. super. It's amazing. Yeah. It's just like watching a, like a, a human centipede movie. You know, yeah. I know a lot of people are, some people don't have the stomach for it, but I mean, it's, it's, it's well, that would never happen. Like, there's no way that would ever happen. Like, who, yeah, who, who would spend the time <laughs> and the dedication to do that? What was that movie um, about the, uh, it was like the American um, bomb squad uh, mm-hmm. in, uh, uh, was it Iraq? Hurt or Locker? Afghanistan? Hurt Locker, yeah. Hurt Locker, yeah. So, yeah, that, there's a, you know, a movie that's got, you know, a lot of explosions to it, but it's also got a lot of, you know, um, thought provoking um, parts to it. So, sure. you know, I, yeah, I, and there's like, ho- there's horror to those explosions too. Like they're terrifying just without even being set yeah, off. Cause the real, yeah. the real, the realism of it is, is yeah. It can be kind of spine tingling. That's for sure. Um, I mean, it, so what, what about you guys? Um, Ian, we'll start with you. W- why would you prefer to see one of those types of films as opposed to like, so let's say, fuck, I mean, we can choose. Why would you rather watch? I don't know lethal weapon or something as opposed to the English Ooh. patient or something something along those lines it doesn't have to be those two films because the English patient is a gore fest no no no, no. <laughs> even a lame no, that, that, no that, that's my point is it's 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 not you know um, you know why, why would you why do you think people would or even you yourself personally why would you rather go see this film that relies on the explosion or the gore one of the two as opposed to just a story driven granted the English patient is a bad example because that's a shitty fucking script but anyways <laughs> well i first of all i like how you said lethal weapon that's, that's definitely one of my favorites i love lethal weapon hell yeah um, it's also a good movie yeah, it's true. But, i mean as far as the explosions go i mean there's not really a whole lot in that one um but to answer your question though um i don't know I, it's it's definitely like I, I mean, I really like both the thought-provoking mm-hmm. and the the mindless, hokey explosions or gore. Um, de- and definitely the hokier, the better, sure. in my opinion. Um, but it, it's just... Uh, it was just... Yeah, I, I really can't exactly answer why, but uh, there is definitely something about it that uh, just captures me in and it's just like damn sure. that is cool probably because it's as you were saying actually i completely agree with you what you were saying earlier is that like this is something that can't happen in real life this is not real yeah. um actually uh, as far as movies and also video games go or you know any source of entertainment Mm-hmm. I've found personally that things that I'm that not only can't happen in real life, but also mm-hmm. things that I don't even like in real life, like such as um, of definitely violence, many forms of violence, m- many uh, forms of, I guess, absurdity. Uh, yeah, explosions, gore. Uh, all of that, like, I don't want anything to do with that in real life, I, at least close up per, to me personally. But in film and fiction and video games, it's really awesome. So I guess uh, what I mean to say is that it's got that taboo factor. Sure, sure. Um, OK, so so same question, Neil, to you. And I'll give you two movies that I'm pretty sure you love. So uh, Die Hard would be now granted i'll probably give a couple that have good scripts die hard being one of them um why would you rather go see a movie like die hard as opposed to a movie like um uh oh like one you had mentioned oh well like children of men you had mentioned that a couple episodes ago um what would draw mm-hmm. you to a movie like that as opposed to children of men which is probably a stronger script if we're going off the classic you know structure 
of film. Yes, but. I mean, I agree. Yeah, uh, Children of Men is definitely going to be a stronger stri- script than Die Hard. But, I mean, to me, there's just a, something about, you know, the action hero and the action hero story, mm-hmm. um, you know, c- overcoming over overwhelming odds and things like that. Just to me, okay. the, the action, the drive, the adventure, uh, it just is an entertaining way to spend two hours. So let me ask you a question. Do you think that you would have liked Die Hard as much without all of the explosions and without all the gunfights? What if it had been the same exact storyline, but maybe, um, you know, John McClane had gone in and he, he killed the guys just by cracking a couple ribs and stabbing some people as opposed to things blown up. Die easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically now you're talking about any kind of kung fu movie out there. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I feel like it's still the same, just different. I mean, it's still going to be a hero that has to, you know, overcome odds and uh, defeat the enemy to sure. save the woman. Uh, it's yeah. still it's still a good story, but I mean, as Americans, the the boom booms are are always better. Yeah. Do you, do you think that for you personally, like, do you, was that for for a movie like Die Hard? Was was that one of the the drawing? was that one of the huge draws to you for it? You know, was, I mean, the, the, that iconic scene where the roof blows up, you know, or, um, what the 11th, 12th floor, mm-hmm. whatever. And then you see McLean, you know, he 33rd, was it the, oh, 33rd? It was the 33rd? Oh, wow. It was yeah. under construction. Uh-huh. I think so. Um, I mean, like with, without those scenes, do you guys think the movie and this actually, I'll open it up to anybody. Do you guys think that would have made a movie like that as iconic? Cause when we think of Die Hard, don't we, don't we think of McLean swinging down on that rope? you know, onto the, onto the window and then he can't get it open and he has to shoot the gun a couple times and then, you know, do one mm-hmm. big swing back and kick it in. I mean, the problem I have with Die Hard is that people seem to think that Bruce Willis as John McClane is the hero of that movie. And really, it's <laughs> Reginald Val Johnson. Uh, he really carries that movie on his back. <laughs> Yellow Die number seven. Nice. Number yeah, five. I was going to say, like, the most memorable part of Die Hard is, like, the characters in the script, in the dialogue, just those catchy... Uh, one-liners, you sure. know, like you be Kaye, you got uh, yeah. gonna go to have a party with friends, get a couple of laughs, get a couple of drinks, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Like I, I never actually think about the explosion in that movie. Like sure. I think the most memorable scene for me is like That's when he's true. just picking glass out of his feet in the bathroom because yeah. yeah, like no insane. action hero does that. <sighs> Right. right. So yeah. th- that's the, the but it goes back to that question then and it's hard to think about because we've we've seen all of these movies so many times over our lifetime and they've become so iconic for us personally and we just we love them would a movie would a movie like Die Hard or any movie along that line would it have been the same for you without the explosions without the gunfights would you like it as much do you think the script is strong enough by itself without any of those additional elements to carry oh, it. Hard? Yeah. It was, yeah. Hard? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like you take out like John Wick, like I love John Wick, but you sure. take out those those gunfights, I think it's a lesser movie. Yeah. Like I like the the war in, in the background in those films. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> the gun kata, uh kind of like equilibrium really makes that movie. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I mean it would still would have been a strong film without the explosions. Yeah. Gary, what do you think? Well, I'm, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a different film, but that I don't, I don't know if that's a fair assessment to make. Cause that's like saying, um, you know, if you're doing a you know a, a different kind of movie, like you can't have music in a scene, you know, like it's part of the it's part and parcel of the script. So, like that's as much a piece of the script as John McClane is is the action mm-hmm. and it sets the tone for the movie. So, I think that would be you know, impossible to kind of, uh, dissect the two from each other because, uh, John, you know, John McClane is in an action movie called Die Hard and like the script, and we could go off forever on Die Hard cause it's just sure. such a fabulous movie, It is, but the script is so, is, is really strong, but mm-hmm. you know, it's just part of it is because of the, the action and the explosions, it's like taking the dinosaurs out of Jurassic Park. It right. just, it would be a different movie. Well, I think with, I think with Jurassic Park, that would completely change the storyline. I think you could probably do Die Hard without explosions. It would just, it wouldn't be as cinematic. The presence wouldn't be as large. Um, so I, I guess, uh, yeah, the reason that I'm posing all these hypotheticals to everybody is I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to establish a base here of how important, mm-hmm. honestly, how important the element of these these fight scenes with, with the explosions and with the gunshots, how important they are to the enjoyment level of a film. Um, I think it's just kind of, we're so, 
used to it nowadays. You know, we're so used to seeing a Michael Bay film mm. and just we know there's going to be, you know, 10 to a dozen explosions, you know, and we're not even halfway through the movie yet. Yeah. You know, and we just we're so used to it. And I wonder how would we feel about those same types of movies, same scripts, nothing changes really, except maybe there's no explosion or the way they kill somebody. Mm. Um you know, I, I wonder how we would feel about those films after we saw them if you took that element out. Right. And, you know, so. and I think that, like, that that's a, a good question to ask because the more or less of different elements that you put into a film really affect it. So if you take a look at, like, Star Wars, the original, uh, the lightsaber was only used uh, very, very infrequently. <laughs> right. um, and it was just one little small thing where, mm -hmm. as if you fast forward to um, episode two, you know, everybody's got a lightsaber. And then if you fast forward even further to um, the... Uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. She's basically using a lightsaber as a flashlight. So I mean, it just it removes the the uniqueness of it. The same thing with like explosions and action and violence. Like if you put too much of into uh, too much of that into a movie, like Michael Bay does, mm. like it just it kind of numbs you to it. But if you have yeah, just it desensitizes you, right? Because it's just like if if you eat one piece of candy, you're like, oh, this is really sweet and I like it. But if you sit there and eat a whole box of Russell Stover's, you're like, uh, I'm gonna throw up. So uh, <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's yeah, Michael Bay is the box of Russell Stover's. Is yeah, it? I was gonna say the last time I actually even like in like I thought about going to see a movie based solely on stupid action and explosions was Transformers Age of Extinction. I was like, this movie's gonna be terrible, really? but at least I can laugh at it. I couldn't even enjoy it on the simplistic like action level. Like I thought the action sequences were terrible. It's like almost a three hour long movie mm -hmm. and it's just crap from beginning to end like i couldn't even enjoy it and i was even drinking too and i was still just like huh. in draft house just going like i don't i don't know why i made this decision i don't know why i'm here and that just makes me sad <laughs> <laughs> i think i had that exact same revelation yeah it's just like and that was that was the last time and then like i didn't even bother to go see um uh, the last Transformers he did, not Bumblebee. I did see Bumblebee. I actually enjoy that movie, but the yeah. last night or whatever, I was like, this is, I'm not, I'm not doing this again. Like that was the last time I could enjoy explosions on just a surface level fun factor. Now mm -hmm. I can't really do it anymore. Right. So I guess, you know, moving, moving on from that portion, that's a good point. Um, do you guys feel that these particular assets do they save certain films? Can we even can we think of any films that maybe the storyline wasn't really that solid? Maybe the characters weren't really that memorable. Maybe I didn't connect with them at all. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I just really enjoyed it because, hell, the violence was fantastic. You know, and in particular, the explosions or as you put with John Wick earlier, Jacob, the gunfights <clears throat> were <throat> just awesome. I mean, there's there's no other more eloquent way to put it. They were just awesome. They were just fucking yep. fantastic um do you guys think that those particular elements do they save shitty films um well for me i think that the script of a film is like the filling of a cake sure and then you can talk about like the action and the explosions and the gore is like the icing of it so you could have the best icing in the world mm -hmm. but if you don't have a solid uh cakey part whatever that <laughs> foamy part in the middle is uh you know you're not it's not gonna be good so like a movie like hardcore henry which is almost entirely you know violence action explosions that kind of thing mm -hmm. it's still it's just a long video game yeah but i mean like it still has a, a a good story like you you know what's going on even though you're not explained everything and it's interesting to follow so i think for me that's why that movie which has very little story the story that it does have is decent to good and so i think that you do need to start with a base of mm -hmm. uh, a good script sure i completely agree with that 100 percent yeah um i you know i i would i would still have to say that i, I do no i mean I, yeah i definitely i do feel that those aspects definitely do save some shitty films uh, and some of them it doesn't, you know. I mean, if you look at a film like ugh, fucking like a Battlefield Earth, you know, something what's just one of the oh, worst films. Yeah, one of the worst films ever created. You know, there were there were a few explosions and a few gunfights here and there. Um, but yeah, was it enough to save horrible script writing that made no sense at all? Hell no, absolutely not. Um, so you know, I mean, it just well, the first Independence Day. 
I think those explosions are really are really amazing. Uh, I, they think are. Yeah. you don't think this very definitely. Good. I, I mean, I, I think the script. Yeah, you, you know. Go ahead. Most uh, Roland Emmerich uh, films are kind of the same territory. Like they, the effects are cool. The the explosions are awesome and memorable. But can't tell you a damn thing that happened in the script, really. Mm. <laughs> Except for Welcome to Earth, of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the script for Independence Day was was decent like it made sense and it had some characters was it the best script ever written no of course not but no. i mean i think that you had enough cake there you could put icing on to continue the metaphor yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely there were definitely a lot of flaws in that movie that the blowing up of those buildings and the white house and stuff definitely made me not care about that, this. That, that's a good point. That's a good point flaws. because how often yeah. in the past had you really seen national or international landmarks like those being yeah, destroyed? Destroyed. Yeah, I think that was the first movie that did that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, that many. And, then, and then going back to Michael Bay, it's the same thing with Armageddon, right? Mm -hmm. Like that movie is nonsense. Like sending oil drillers to an <laughs> asteroid uh, with like a yeah. week's worth of training, yeah. if that. But the explosion Definitely. and like the action is actually pretty well done. But it's so it's so bonkers. It's a bonkers movie. But it's still it, fun it to really watch. Is, yeah yeah. Like there, there's a beginning where the asteroids hit, and then like <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's like, just all the this guys stuff happening. Stand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which came out the same year as Godzilla 2, yeah. so which is perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and then it shows them go all these quirky guys going through military training or, <laughs> or NASA training, I mean. And <laughs> I was like, man, th these guys sure are quirky. Steve Buscemi's uh, got like some weird ass laser beam on the asteroid, and he's got space dementia. <laughs> I did like the beginning, though, when the guy finds the asteroid, and he's like, I want to name it after my wife, Edna. Oh, yeah. She's an unscapable bitch from which there was no... Yeah, it was just, that was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay, so, right, yeah, so I think we're, we're in a fair amount of uh, agreement across the board on that. Uh, why, why do you guys think it's so popular for that one action shot. And I mentioned earlier, and you know what I'm talking about. It's the guy or the girl or the group of people slowly walking away from the object or yeah, the object that's about to blow up. And they always like zoom in really tight. So it looks really badass. Why, yeah. why is, why is that so great? Why do we love that so much? It also makes the explosion I mean, look closer. It does make the explosion yeah. look closer and bigger. I think it's, it's that empowerment, right? Like even as an audience surrogate, you're on this hero's journey with that character and right. seeing them succeed at the end and have that giant explosion, like uh, maybe not walking away from it, but like even going back to Jaws and watching Brody say, smile, you son of a bitch, as that one bullet finally penetrates like just the, the oxygen tank and blows the shark up. You're like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you're like, you're like standing up and cheering going like, fuck yeah, kill that shark. Um, cause it's just like, we were on the, that hero's journey with them. Like sometimes that doesn't work. Like uh, I remember, um, X-Men origins Wolverine or like right. Wolverine, uh, takes down that dude in the helicopter. And then he tries to have that badass slow motion walk away shot. But like that movie was terrible up and like, and it's still terrible after that, after that, everybody um, says that, that now. I always love that. Oh, I thought <laughs> it was like, so bad. Like that particular <laughs> shot of the movie. Johnny. Johnny. Are you, oh, you're asking, yeah. I thought you were asking Jacob. No, I was no. like, he just, no, he, he just, no, he just, he just told you. He didn't claim to like that. <laughs> uh, no, I just, the movie as the movie as a whole, you know me, I really like uh, origin stories based on heroes or characters that I already have a good amount of knowledge on. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is this, the script and the characters were, were pretty weak. But uh, also that just that 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 explosion sequence was bad because he's like walking away from it. And it's kind of mm -hmm. obviously like a. Um, Con, like a composition like cgi shot right but it's like up until then the movie was kind of bad i mean not kind of bad it was bad <laughs> I, I didn't like i thought that movie did a terrible job with wolverine origin um and just really didn't stick the landing so it's like th what should be an awesome shot like a badass shot of our hero walking away it was just kind of like you didn't earn this this was completely frivolous and unearned that kind of stuff <laughs> so that that kind of is a good segue into another question that i had for the explosions themselves do you guys prefer a cgi explosion or the real thing give me that real shit give you the real shit all day mm -hmm. huh definitely real okay real for sure okay. oh yeah get that tnt action TNT. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, actually you know for an example 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the Dark Knight, the Joker, the the explosion that was real didn't actually work out when when the Joker presses the button to blow up the hospital. Oh, and then, so he's walking away from it, like you know, like the cool guy, like we were just talking about earlier. Right. And he presses the button, and then nothing happens because just technical difficulties. And then <laughs> finally, the the hospital blows up, and you know that was a real effect that accidentally made one of the best parts of the entire so the delay, movie. Okay, because I yeah, know what you're talking about. The delay, so was in, the delay was intentional. That's, it yeah, was not it was intentional. Like, yeah, That's interesting. Actually, which is why huh. it's important to keep rolling, uh, even if there's one <laughs> small mistake. Definitely. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, Every multiple absolutely. cameras if you have the option. Um, well, especially if you, wait, if you put that much money into your explosions, and you're like, why is nothing going off? Let's wait. <laughs> Just wait it out. So that's, that's, that's interesting, too, because something that they've actually been doing, and they've been doing it over the last couple decades, but in particular over the last decade, they had a really good one. I don't know if you guys had, uh, how many of you guys have seen Mad Max Fury Road, but with the particular, yeah, yeah so the, the, one of the scenes where Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron, and the, um, the rest of their crew, where they're trying to get away, um, from the, the Raiders or whatever their gang was called, um, there was one portion where they blew up one of the tankers at the very back and the explosion actually, it wasn't large enough, um, so I can't. I can't. Who's who's the director of that again? It's slipping my George mind. Miller. There, George Miller. Thank you. So George Miller didn't think that the explosion was actually large enough, so he was like, "I I, I need to shoot this again." And they were like, "We, do you know how long that took? You know how much millions of dollars went into just this one shot, this one explosion? We can't do it again." So they had to go back and they had to add additional CGI flames um, back into that. And the more I was researching, the more I was seeing they're doing that on a fair amount of movies. You'll get an initial explosion and a lot of times it's not large enough mm-hmm. to really captivate the audience so they'll add on CGI to the out the outside of it so mm-hmm. it'll be a combo yeah and it's also interesting because movies like a movie explosion is typically based um, around an accelerant like gas or kerosene or jet fuel or something like that mm-hmm. so you get that nice big fireball but a real explosion is hardly any flame it's just kind of a just a a massive movement of material immediately and then you know uh some you know some smoke and you know of course there's a little bit of fire but like it's it's a a real explosion looks much different in real life than it does in the movies and it's much less (laughs) i guess cinematic Mm. so just I, I would say almost, especially if you go with the like, like if an atomic bomb is dropped or something like mm-hmm. that, I would almost say that's more cinematic and they always have to CGI that unless they build a to scale replica mm-hmm. and then, you know, do a tiny, they do that a lot, in, you know, before uh, pre 2000. Um, but crazy, I was actually looking this up. The largest explosion ever on film, uh, and I think you guys should have that on the itinerary there, was the scene from uh, 007's <laughs> Spectre. Uh, where they were running away from, uh, I think it was Christoph Waltz was the antagonist in that mm-hmm. one, and it was his bunker, and uh, to blow that up, and that was that was the, they claimed there was no CGI. It was two thousand two hundred twenty four gallons of kerosene and seventy two pounds of power powder explosives, um, and apparently they had to go through multiple times to try and time it correctly because um, they could only do it once. They only yeah. had enough money and enough supplies to do it one time, so they had to do a couple dry runs where they you know they'd press it. And basically, what happens in those situations is uh, it's, it goes the same for for gunshots in a film. Um, it's very it's. It's very tightly choreographed, and the more I was looking into it, the more I was like, Jesus, the person in charge of these special effects, the amount of, like, the monotonous detail and, you know, constantly going over the same thing over and over again, it's like a waltz almost, you yeah. know? it's well, You don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, but you also, each... Each each uh, each um, drum of kerosene or gasoline has, or um, if it's a gunshot, they'll use like a little thing called a powder bag. Uh, and it's just full of you know sand and, and dirt and stuff. They have a radio transmitter inside, and each of those is hardwired to another transmitter. And each transmitter holds like three to five of them. And then those are wired to another one. And then mm-hmm. there's like the main transmitter itself. Um, so they have to they have to basically try to test it ahead of time in time with the dialogue because they only got typically Mm. one maybe two shots um but god just the amount of time and effort and money that has to go into that one shot i i wouldn't be surprised if it took them multiple days just for that one scene yeah 
you know. Um, and that didn't even have any actors close to the explosion. You're right. Yeah, yeah, they were they were like a solid fifty yards away kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then yeah, the safety protocols to going through that. It's just it's 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 a mind fuck. Um, so another question to you guys before we move on uh, to the gore fest, as far as explosions go from things like car crashes, uh, missiles being launched into buildings, uh, or a nuclear explosion. Or something that I, I didn't mention, what type of explosion do you guys like the most? Do you prefer something massively huge to where we see an entire city or planet being destroyed? Mm-hmm. Or do you like something smaller where we see a person or a car or a floor of a building being blown up? Um, uh, Neil, what about you? I mean, it just depends on the movie and, you know, what's going on. But it, to me, explosions are great. Bigger is not always necessarily better. Okay. Uh, so something more contained. Uh as long as it's you know fits what's going on, yeah, for sure, for sure. How about you, Jacob? Uh, I'm uh, well. I prefer uh, nuclear explosions. Um, okay. I've always been fascinated by nuclear detonations and uh, kind of how horrifying they are, especially like the fallout and residual effects of nuclear detonations. But also watching them on film kind of um, kind of gets your your uh, blood pumping, your heart heart racing because it's just. Because you know what's coming, like especially like you go back to like Terminator Two, as like Sarah Connor's like hol- like nuclear uh, nuclear nightmare, um, always freaked me out as a kid. Uh, as she watches like all the children in front of her roast as the bomb like blows up the city, um, and even mm-hmm. like in the um, some of the Godzilla movies, they do that that really that really well with uh, like his atomic breath and stuff causes like a mushroom cloud, you know, symbolic of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Like I would just, I just find nuclear explosions like, uh, just really horrifying on any, on any screen really. Yeah. I'd have to agree with you on that one. Uh, Ian, what about you? I'm definitely in agreement with what you just said with nuclear, yeah, nuclear explosions and just how terrifying and just awesome they are like just a combination of power and and horror um yeah definitely bigger is better especially if you have like imax 3d Mm -hmm. it is it is really incredible you you know uh one thing that really stuck out with me was actually in uh star wars force awakens when they showed the um not the death star but the whatever it's called the the bigger yeah and there was just this the whole like Nazi scene and then they started it up and it just you just see this sheer awesome force just come out of the planet base thing and Mm -hmm. it just destroys like six planets just immediately like that that actually really stuck out for me yeah just the magnitude of it all is is, it's frightening it's terrifying but it's, it's, it's exciting at the same time Gary what about you yeah, I, I'm going to agree with Neil that it really depends on the particular script. So, like, in Die Hard, uh, they, they blew up the top story of a building, uh, which in some movies is would be a really small explosion. Um, but if you took that same explosion and put it on, like, uh, the Death Star at the end of A New Hope, it'd just be a little... And that wouldn't really be very uh, exciting. Yeah, so you need a bigger explosion. But I, I, uh, I also think that you can go, like, too much. Like, to me... The uh, Force Awakens, when they were like, oh, we already blew up a planet with the Death Star. What are we going to do now? We're going to blow up five planets. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> five is better than one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was a member I like how you used my example against it. That's you know, I've had that example in my head since Johnny asked the question. I'm sorry, man. It just, that's just how it fell. <laughs> I can't control it, okay? You're, you're, a, you're a victim of the product, man. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I, I, I'd have to, I, I think I'd probably be a little more centered on this yeah i definitely love seeing i love seeing car explosions in like uh, fast getaway scenes Mm -hmm. has always been one of my favorite things um i mean any of the any of the fast and the furious movies um where that happens is just i love it when cars drive off a cliff and they explode before they hit the bottom (laughs) it's just like oh okay (laughs) that wouldn't happen or um like in groundhog day where he just goes into Corey. boom well no not now (laughs) love love those delays the one that's always stuck with me though was from terminator 2 judgment day where you see you know Sarah Connor's character going, um, you know, going back to when um, uh, S- S- she, S- Skynet she had a dream, yeah, yeah, when she had the dream and uh, seen uh, Skynet launch the 
nuclear warheads at every city and when it hit LA and you just saw that you know I mean they they just made a scale to model and they blew yeah. that up but you just the shots they, they show the shots from a street level and they show them in between buildings to make it seem like you're just a it's a human witnessing this mm-hmm. for a couple seconds and then they're wiped out of existence completely mm-hmm. um, and that that's probably one that's always that and the Die Hard one where he swings down because that's just badass looking yeah and Doctor um, Strange Love they actually used real footage of nuclear bombs going off at the end of the movie Did so they? That was, I didn't know that <laughs> way to steal my movie recommendation so <laughs> damn it Gary I'll edit this part out no I won't <laughs> no you won't <laughs> Sorry, so Neil. they also did it in the, uh, the intro to the 98 Godzilla. They used the bikini atoll footage. Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. Was that the one with Matthew Broderick? Yeah, not, okay. not a good movie. <laughs> but that, that opening credit sequence is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is, so, so let's segue into uh, going into probably what I would consider to be just as popular of an asset to a film as explosions and gunfights would be the gore would mm-hmm. be blood and guts and body limbs and whatever the hell you want to, whatever the hell you want to throw in there. Um, so let's just, let's just throw out cause there's probably a couple that I forgot of categories, not, not necessarily horror films, but categories of genre of film where you would see an insanely large amount of of blood and gore um like i mean i had mentioned torture porn earlier mm-hmm. um what what else what else you guys got war movie yeah okay yeah a war movie would would, would be another one yeah for sure uh, zombie flick zombie flick yeah zombie flick would be a pretty good one um and i think those fall under so like Splatter films, from from what I was seeing, uh, splatter films in particular would actually encompass a few different ones, um, but torture porn being one, and then splat stick, which mm-hmm. would be kind of like a Shaun of the Dead, or even to okay, uh, right. uh, expend um, the Sam Raimi one, uh, Evil Dead. Okay, uh, so Evil Dead, that trilogy, and the remake, um, the one that kind of has a comedic aspect to it, while still being just completely over the top, gruesome, mm. and 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 bloody. Um, what what else do you guys think? Would would slashers? I guess slashers would fall. Yeah, classic slashers. slashers yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, there's even like the more <clears throat> subtle kind of gore movies. Uh-huh. Like, uh, did y'all ever see Raw? Yeah, actually. Like the the part where her friend gets her finger cut off uh-huh. and then she just kind of stares at it and nibbles at it. Mm-hmm. Like, not not really a gory movie, but, but that scene in particular, like the gore was like super subtle but also very disturbing at it the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, with, with body horror, we could do that as well. Um, yeah, anything about Cronenberg. Hell much. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, uh, what's your, since, since we're already on the subject of Cronenberg, Ian, what's your favorite Cronenberg movie? Videodrome. Okay. I don't think mm-hmm. I've, I don't think I've seen that one. Okay. Is there just, is there just an insane amount of what, what, so for him, what makes uh, his particular, his because as Jacob stated earlier, you know, and I, I would have to agree, when you get really gory, you can get creative with how you get gory. And so, like, what was his yeah. calling card for that area? Well, okay, well, um, I, I mean, each, each movie's kind of different. Uh, like, his early early ones, like, uh, I think Scanners is the first Scanners. one. There's, a, there's somebody's head that just explodes. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Video Drum, uh, James Woods has a chest vagina kind of thing. <laughs> and he's got where a he just, a what? Well, that's a weird way to describe <laughs> chest that. Chest vagina. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, you actually, what, what, here, what's so uh, really flick. good? <laughs> what's vagina. really good about that? Is, well, that it's a hallucination. <laughs> he he doesn't actually have it, but he hallucinates that he has it. But I mean, the effect is real for us, the audience. It it, it is real, and he sticks his hand inside of his own chest and pulls out a gun, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, so actually, to answer your question with Cronenberg. It's it's really the uh, the I, I guess it's not special effects, but it, yeah. it's uh, you, you know a, a lot of like the claymation kind of thing, you know. Like, yeah. Okay. Like, it, like very stop motion. Visual. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Kind of, kind of, either that or a lot of makeup. Sure. sure. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's both totally off the wall but also kind of realistic merged together in a, a kind of a terrifying kind of way. Sure. So 
so let's let's kind of get into this one because with with the explosions, with the explosions, there's not a ton of subgenres. It's it's primarily action films and war movies for the most part. Mm. With gore fest or gory films, it seems like there's we we named about seven or eight, I would think. Um, so what what what's y'all's favorite? What what type is your favorite? Um, Gary, let's start with you. Uh, for gore, um, you know, uh, I think that I would say. More, even more so than explosions, um, less is you know is better in a lot of ways because I think when you have w- it, okay. when you have too much, it takes away from the 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 power of it. So mm-hmm. like when you've got like a movie like Saw, I mean, it almost gets kind of ridiculous. I mean, it is it does turn your stomach right. to see people hacking Which themselves would be a tor- up. The torture porn genre, yeah, yeah. essentially. But when you have a movie like. Um, that, that has the gore in a more realistic or subtle way. Like one of my favorite examples is the the movie Milk at the end of it. When he gets shot, it's a very realistic kind of bullet wound, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that uh, to me is uh, a little bit more impactful. Uh, having said that, though, I, I would say like um, probably a lot of Tarantino stuff when he really gets going is really fun to watch, like uh, the Kill Bill series sure. or um, Inglorious Bastards. It's almost like... Comic gore. I don't even know if that's a yeah, subgenre, like but it reminds so me of a comic gore kind of anime. Kind of, yeah, when yeah. they're like shooting like a thousand bullets into Adolf <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Glorious Bastards, yeah, that's right. Oh man. Grindhouse um, gore. Grindhouse mm, gore. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, for sure. Um, Neil, what about you? As far as my favorite genre, uh, probably be slasher. Mm. Uh, I like 80 slashers, even modern day ones like Cabin in the Woods, uh, I think is. Is a good slasher that has a good mixture of you know disembowelment and blood, but it's not necessarily over the top. Okay. Whereas um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, you know, oh, yeah. they go the opposite direction and it's mm-hmm. you know blood everywhere. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's splat stick at its <laughs> finest. That yes. and Shaun of the Dead are probably probably my two favorite splat sticks. I would have to say. Oh, that's that, that's good. Uh, Jacob, how about you? Uh, mine's definitely body horror. Okay. Uh, Why so? It, to me, it's the, it's the most frightening. Mm-hmm. Like I love I love my uh, <clears throat> my slashers, my splastic. Not a huge fan of torture porn. Okay. Like I like the first two Saw movies as good like thrillers because right. I actually like how they were written. In, but the the rest are kind of all just just torture porn to me. But right. body horror, it's kind of just uh, way more horrifying as as the older I get. Where I'm just like even exploring my own body, and be like, "What the fuck is that?" Or like, I better go see a doctor. It's like um, kind of showing you your own mortality in a lot of ways, and uh, just watching like a lot of your favorite characters or actors just slowly degenerate into mm-hmm. uh, something inhuman. Kind of like that's what, like going back to a, uh, I think it was Ian talking about uh, David Cronenberg. Uh, like the fly still gets me to this day, just watching Jeff Goldblum degenerate into that creature mm-hmm. or like Tetsuo in uh, Akira, the way his body That's just becomes yeah. like a cyber organic monster. And it's just horrifying to watch. Cause it's like, you're losing your sense of self, your sense of being as you become this other thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ian, you, um, I, I really enjoy the off the wall, over the top splastic just nice. just an obscene amount of blood that is pretty much more hokey and funny to watch you know those, um, those are kind of yeah the the less realistic you know um yeah it, it, more like cartoony kind of thing just you know just kind, kind of yeah the opposite of oh this this, is, this could happen it's like yeah this this won't happen yeah, it's, it's definitely fun funny. to laugh at uncomfortable mm-hmm. situations mm-hmm. and i think those those lend themselves to uh yeah. to that act so do you love that scene in uh, dracula dead and loving it when uh they're putting the stake in uh, <laughs> yes. beatrix what was her name? anyway they like yeah. bella and like he's like how much more blood could there be and it's just like <laughs> geyser <laughs> <laughs> Somebody turn it off! <laughs> Hit a oh, major so artery. Glad, man, I, I'm so glad somebody else. I vaguely remember that. I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I'm eating time. vine and uh, drinking chicken. I haven't seen that in a couple decades. <laughs> oh, Lucy, I'm British. <laughs> so are these. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I do love is in like Evil Dead 2 where his hand is running around possessed. He cuts his hand off and then the hand is on the other side of the wall and he shoots it with a shotgun and then there's just gallons and gallons of blood mm-hmm. that just 
<laughs> splash out on him. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm going to have to say as much as I... I, I, I definitely, you know, I, I agree with Neil, especially on the 80s and 90s slashers. You know, there's some of my some of my all time favorites just in general, regardless of genre. Um, and splat stick is hilarious. But you know what, man, for me, it, torture porn is really yeah. is where I really. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to I'm going to I'll, I'll tell you why, because and Jacob, it goes back to your argument where you had stated or, or the statement you made where you're saying when you get into the gore and the visual body effects, you can start getting really creative. When you get into torture porn, you see people getting really, really fucked up shit and really creative. Once again, this is the same thing. You, it's It would be so incredibly rare to find a realistic instance outside of, you know, Ed Gein or something, you know, where something like this happened. But when you get into movies like, when you get into movies like the Human Centipede series, which is... Obviously, they're not great films, but they're so fucking stupid and entertaining. And I just, <laughs> I just love watching them and just laughing my ass off. Um, all the way to if you guys ever saw um, Kevin Smith's stab at torture porn with Tusk, mm. um, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I hated that film, but when he, you know, sorry, spoiler alert, it's been out for almost a decade. Um, when he turns Justin Long into this human walrus, essentially, it, it's just so. It's just so stupid. Yeah, it's yeah. so it's so great. I love it. Oh man, it. Uh, it I don't know. That, that's that's the most entertaining <laughs> for me. Um, and you know, Johnny, I have a. I have, sorry to interrupt. No. I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the the name of the genre, torture porn, meaning <laughs> pornographic, right? Meaning that you, you know it, it's not an art. That that's pretty much what that means is right. is it's more of like a shock value and yeah. not actual artistic right vision. I I you know it's funny when I it's funny you ask that because when I had first heard of that type of genre. I was probably thinking a completely said, different movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I would have been too. Yeah, something more like hostile, but with more sex. Um, but it, it, yeah, you know, it was one of those things. When I heard that was the name of the genre, I was like, huh, okay. And so I went online, I researched and, you know, saw in particular, which was uh, just a, a, at least the first one uh, was, you know, a solid script by itself. But the fact that it fell into that category really baffled me a little bit. I'm like, wow, really? I'd... Okay, I didn't I didn't know that. So it's about like body, you know, mutilating body parts and like body dismemberment and um, and stuff like that, you know, um, you know, even cannibalism, shit like that. I don't I don't really feel the name. The torture portion makes sense. The porn, just because you're right, it's it's not an art form. It's just it's very it's very bland. It's very kind of bottom of the barrel. Um, I don't think that's a fair, I don't think it's a fair name to give a, uh, to give a movie like that. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, and I bring up Human Centipede again, not because I think it's one of the greatest films ever created, even though it's entertaining as fuck. Um, the first two, you know, I, who, who in their right mind would think of a storyline like that? Who, who that, I mean, this, this person's gotta be high on something. I don't know what it is, but they're fucking not sharing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's creative in itself because it goes so far outside of the bounds of like the realm of reality and even further past that, you know, I mean, it's past the fucking realm of fantasy. It's past the fucking realm of even like a slasher film or something like the thought of they put these people in modern day situations and then say, OK, we're going to sew mouth to ass for 18 people and they're going to live like this for the rest of their days or we're going to create a human caterpillar. If you ever saw the third one and we're going to cut their limbs off, but they're still going to be sewn mouth to ass. And it's stupid. Like it, 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 those people would, they would never survive. There's just, there's no way they would survive for a very long time. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, maybe a little bit, maybe, but not for very long. Um, and it'd just be pointless to do it, you know? And then you look at, you know, you just, you look at shit like, like saw. I mean, I know when the saw series came out, they had a lot of, they had a lot. Of, and I think you were the one that actually told me this, Gary. Um, maybe, maybe you weren't, but, there were a lot of reports coming out around the world of not s wannabe serial killers, I guess, trying the exact copycats, same thing yeah. that were that were. Yeah, they were copycats um, that were trying the same thing that uh, the guy who uh, was Jigsaw was doing in the films. Um, so I, I, I actually I don't think that's a fair assessment of torture porn, adding adding the word porn. If you want to call it torture, I don't know, torture horror. Yeah. Or, uh, torture. Dismemberment, yeah, uh, like, another. 
Another term is exploitation. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, you just want to call it torture exploitation or just an exploitation film? Sure. I mean, I think yeah, adding, a, adding a line... Torture adding exploitation. A, sure, adding a line to a movie like that where it actually does take a fair amount of really, mind you, fucked up, but a lot of imagination to come up with an idea or and then from that idea, a storyline to build around it. I, I think it's incredibly creative on its own. I don't think it's a good thing to happen in real life, obviously. And I, you know, I, I don't think that it's, uh, it, it makes, you know, one of the, the greatest genres ever created, but as far as entertainment factor, uh, yeah, I think that's completely unfair to say that it's, it's not, it's not creative at all. Well, I, I think that when they call it torture porn, they do so because it appeals to, you know, the baser instincts of humanity, just like yeah. uh, sexual pornography does. Right. And it, you know, that's why, you know, like you go to watch it because you're like, I shouldn't like this. But for some some deep, dark place inside me, deep down that you don't want to talk about, you, you want, need that torture porn. You need that torture porn on the wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, and so that's kind of, I think, where that uh, the impetus for using that name yeah. for it is. Uh, it's kind of that taboo that I was mentioning earlier. Yeah, it seems like it. Seems like it. Yeah, um, I mean, I question. watched Doctor Pimple Popper. That's oh, torture. <laughs> oh God, I'm done. I'm, I'm, done. Done. I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I love those shows. Did you know, uh, Jacob? We need to have a follow up episode where we talk about the shittiest trash reality shows coming out on Netflix that we've binged. I think we need oh to have an episode because yes. we mentioned that like a couple months ago when quarantine first started, and we never, uh, we never uh, uh, elaborated on that. And uh, yeah, I'm evolved. From- uh, I'm. <laughs> A uh, few seasons deep into uh, 90 Day Fiance right now, and I started My Strange Addiction. <laughs> I've watched a couple episodes that I want to. But yeah, yeah. Dr. Dr. Pimple Popper is pretty great, too. I love my medical mystery shows. <laughs> I, 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 I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. Um, <laughs> so, Dr. Gregory House. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a lot of times with with the bloodiest movies of all, so I, I just want to go down the list. Not going from, because I, I had sent, for list, those of you listening, um, we did have an itinerary this week, and I did send a couple facts to everybody about, um, you know, bloodiest movies of all time and scenes that were that had a, uh, that were just complete bloodbaths and broke the Guinness Book of World Records kind of thing. Without that list, without seeing those facts, what would you guys would have guessed would have been, A, the bloodiest film ever created, and or B, you can choose to answer one or both, uh, the bloodiest scene ever uh, ever created in history. Mm-hmm. Any, any thoughts on that one? Um, my initial thought on the bloodiest scene was actually correct after, after you know, after Ian made me watch that, um, the first movie. And I won't go into <laughs> it yet. I won't go into it yet. Um, but uh, Gary, let's, let's start with you since you well, seem like you're thinking on it. Yeah, I mean, I think the bloodiest scene would have to be Carrie. I mean, she gets covered in a bucket of blood, right? Good point. Yeah. Good um, point. I mean, that's like 100% blood, so... It's 100% blood. 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 Yeah. Blood in, blood they out. They probably just used real pig's blood. Yeah. Yeah. I, they just, may have. The movies in the so? 70s were kind of... I feel weird. like... Uh, sorry, um, who was it? Sissy Spacek played... Was it Sissy Spacek? Was it Sissy, um, that played Carrie originally? I think... I think that's correct. I can't, I can't, I can't. But anyways, but I, I'm assuming she probably would have sued the hell out of whatever production company filmed well, that if they the had Exorcist, done that. they were breaking the actor's bones, yanking them back and everything. I don't think they were intentionally doing that, though. I think it was the just a byproduct. Like, yeah, well, the director was like, yank her hard. <laughs> yank her hard. Pull her limbs out. Well, like... <laughs> Let's she, create a torture porn well, here. <laughs> well, in The Exorcist, they had like a, a rig set up to pull one of the actresses back. Um, right. And she was like, please don't yank me that hard. You're hurting me. And so the director was like, pull her as hard as you can. And okay. like, I think she broke her ankle or something <laughs> okay all right so carrie carrie, carrie. Yeah, would be carrie. Uh, long story short carrie okay all right uh neil what about you uh my guess for film with the most blood would probably be the evil dead okay good the, which one the, like 2013, the 2013 remake okay okay yeah there was that was a bloody fucking film yeah for, it, for sure it rained blood i was gonna say yeah. it's just nothing Butt blood. Yeah, that's pretty much it's the only draw to it. Butt blood. Butt blood. Nothing but butt blood. Oh god. Why your butt too many times? Oh god. <laughs> you I mean, it's too? We're a very <laughs> we're a very uncouth <laughs> podcast for sure. Uh, Jacob, what about you? All that Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gotta have the chalupa. Don't have the chalupa. <laughs> You'll regret it in two hours. <laughs> Give me that Diablo sauce any day, man. Um 
I, yeah, I would have I would have thought that Evil Dead remake specifically because of the rain. Sure. Um, outside of that, maybe even Evil Dead Two, okay. where that grandma just keeps vomiting up, or she's eating the dude in the overalls, and she's just vomiting up his blood just constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, Dead Alive, uh, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive yes. with the uh, the lawnmower scene right. and everything else in that movie is pretty crazy. It's fucking insane, man. Um, or Ricky, I don't know if y'all have ever seen the. Uh, it's based off a, a manga. It's called Ricky O. It's a martial arts gore movie. Oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah it, we just covered that on my podcast. Oh yes, oh, nice. uh, and and so there's like there's so much gore in that. There's like one dude who gets stuck in like a, a meat grinder, and Ricky yeah. like trying to shove him down, and it's just gore <laughs> just pouring all over Ricky. It's the most absurd thing you'll ever see. Like there's even a part where I I think Ricky gets uh, his arm cut, and so he just like rips the veins out of his arms and ties them together with his teeth. I don't think that would work. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's real medical medical issues. Issues. Well, in, in the movie, it would yeah. work. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's a, a live-action anime. Okay. Yeah, oh. it's, it's, it's ridiculously it's over the top and schlocky. Like, uh-huh. he punches a hole straight through a dude. Oh, that happened in uh, yeah. <laughs> Evil Dead, actually. <laughs> or um, Brain Dead, excuse me. Um, yeah. Ian, how about you? Uh, ooh, um, Hobo with a Shotgun. Yeah, oh, good. I was yeah, I was thinking that, that earlier. Lot, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's also a good choice. Yeah, uh, I was actually going to use that as my uh, the recommendation at the end, but I have you another can. one anyway. So okay, you can use both. Uh, yeah, in, in the beginning where they uh, uh, where homeboy gets his head cut off. Yeah, in the manhole. Where and, it's stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just like his neck is raining blood, and then the girl starts dancing <laughs> in it. Yeah. But not only that, I mean, the, the entire movie front to end is just nothing but just blood it's and just, just splatter fest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would have. Um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, that um, <laughs> for with I, and I know it's not real blood, obviously, but I would have said the shining at one point when we see the scene with the elevator opening yeah. and the blood just pouring in, um, mm-hmm. you know, before before I had actually read this. So it, it currently is up for debate. Exactly. But there's there's three movies in particular that that hold these that hold the titles. Um, bloodiest horror film. Like I say, it is up for debate. But um, apparently uh, Fede Alvarez had used approximately 50,000 gallons of fake blood in one day for. Uh, it's it's it says in one day I think it was multiple days I think this was a misprint online but uh, for the final scene of the 2013 Evil Dead reboot so Jacob and Neil what? you guys were spot on good job uh, very well done um, and then uh, uh, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive uh, which uh, Ian and I had just covered on his podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, had that particular lawn mowing scene that we've referenced a few times tonight where that churned out 300 liters of blood per minute. Um, so that that's that's pretty freaking impressive. How many liters are in? I think it's four uh, liters to a gallon, right? I think it's like 2.3. It's some, some weird yeah. metric system. Yeah, Nobody yeah, knows. Yeah, yeah. They should get on, they should get on our scale. Um, and then, uh, but for the bloodiest scene ever, apparently, according to Jessica Chastain and the director of It Chapter 2, um, they had a particular scene. It didn't tell me which scene, um, but apparently one of the Her scenes... And, uh, I think her in the bathroom stall, right? Okay, yeah, that, that would make sense. Apparently, they, they, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they had used uh, over forty five hundred gallons of blood in just that one scene. Um, God, dude, just the amount of time it would take to clean that shit up. Because when we were in and I'll, when we were in theater, mm-hmm. Gary Neal and I were in theater way back in the day. I'm sure they, they're not using. I'm like sure they're not. Blood. I'm sure they're not. <laughs> but can you think about it? Like what were we were using? Like. It's like sh- peanut butter, peanut and, butter like, and dye and, and like red sugar, and like sugar and it's water. very sticky and thick. Yeah. Uh, it looked real, not gonna lie. And then corn syrup. Yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then you can buy like and corn syrup um, is one of the other options. Movie kind of stage blood that's uh, it's thinner than on stage, right? Um, but like it's very expensive. I feel like you'd have to have, and I feel like we should have looked this up. But there has to be some type of solution that yeah. they would use to dissolve some of it, kind of like what you would use for like a woman might use for a movie makeup yeah. or something like that, you know, I, to get it out I, easier. I'm sure for like the 50,000 gallons of blood, they just were like water with a bunch of dye in it. Cause <laughs> yeah. that's the only thing we're going to be doing. Yeah. Here. I guess. Yeah. If they're shooting it quick enough, then, uh, then it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You won't be able to get uh, a super great look at it. I also would have thought 
Kill Bill Volume One, the uh, the yes. entire uh, action sequence at the end would have oh. probably been in the top as well because they're Absolutely. just spewing spewing pressurized blood left and right. You got mm-hmm. everyone losing limbs, and then when it cuts to black and white, you're just yeah. like, there's just blood everywhere in that movie. God, yeah, there, there there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. Um, God, I I wish I wish we had more time to touch on like every form of of violence in film. Yeah, you know, because there's be other really ones. Nice day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's. There. I would like to point out how every time I come on this podcast, we talk about Dead Alive, and I'm I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> it is. It's it's a. It's, I'm I'm glad you made me watch it. It's it's much much better than Flesh Gordon. That's for sure. Is that a point? <laughs> I definitely enjoyed it more. Yeah. Well, I was on I was on another podcast with Ian this past weekend, and and we had to watch and review Flesh Gordon, and and I was not a, not a fan of the film. Mm. Um, but but <laughs> Brandon was pretty fucking great. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I there's there's just God. If we even if we could do like a segment of of like you know I don't know like a like we uh, violence and film. Or something like that, you know. Uh, you know, the we top could, ten best takedowns in film of all time. Top ten curb stomps. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's because there's because there's yeah, there's there's shootouts, there's sword duels, there's you know armies pitted against each other. You know, mm. there's the mythical element with fantasy where you can throw fucking you know giant and troll battles and um, you know kidnappings, hangings. Yeah, it's like, you know uh, armies against giant bugs or giant mm. uh, animals or something. There's so many different things we could do for. You know why we love violence in film. This is just barely scratching the surface. Um, but unfortunately, we are running out of time for today. So let's go ahead and uh, let's run through uh, top picks and recommendations from. Let's do everybody this week. Let's okay. not let's not just do our our guests. Um, but we will start with our guests because we are we are gracious hosts. We like gentlemen. to think at least we are gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen and scholars. And scholars. Um, so Ian, let's go ahead and start with you. What uh, what one or two recommendations do you have for our listeners this week? Yeah, I was actually wondering, can I do a regular recommendation for a movie and also a so bad is good sure. recommendation? Yeah, okay. Uh, sweet. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, the regular one, a uh, movie that came out a couple years ago, was di- didn't really get that popular, but it's it's definitely got some cult uh, appeal to it. Sure. Uh, Mandy. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry, Nicholas Cage. Yeah, that that <laughs> is uh, <laughs> that 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 one's a doozy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's parts where he, um, well, let's just say the very end, he's covered in blood and he's just on all his cocaine and acid Perfect. and he just just slaughtered an entire hippie satanic cult very top very top and, of over this week <laughs> yeah <laughs> to uh, uh yeah up against um w- with this amazing score it's like almost like doom metal but it's not Ooh. any it's, uh no no guitar or drums or anything it is it's uh um, it, 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 it sounds like metal, but it's not. And, and he's just like holding this weird sword thing. And it's just, it's just epic nice. and doomy and bloody <laughs> and violent. Perfect. Well, it's a Nicolas Cage film, so that's all you had to say with me. Yep. I didn't have to know the synopsis. <laughs> yeah. The oh story. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, you have the you have the classic Nicolas Cage freak out. Yeah, me. Like Cage. there's a whole scene where he's chugging down vodka and just oh, like oh yeah, that scene is so out. good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would be your uh, your other um, one? So bad it's good. Uh yeah. So the so bad it's good one. Since you know that that's that's my forte, uh, I before I mention it, I, I do have to say I'm I'm a little disappointed with you guys on this episode for something. Why is that? You, you've got you've gone throughout this entire episode and haven't mentioned Neil Brain. Oh, that is right. He's right. He doesn't <laughs> use a lot of blood. Yeah, you know what? Neil Brain doesn't use a lot of blood. Every time, uh, you know, we we do typically mention yeah. Neil Brain. He just kind of makes people disappear. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Three hundred million people. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not blood, but explosions. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know what? We don't need Neil one Brain. explosion. We don't need used it again and again and again. <laughs> the same, the same footage recycled yeah. over and over. We, you know, okay. we, we, you know what, man? We we don't need Neil Brain because we've got Neil Riley, and yeah. and that's have, a better Neil. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> have you all but, seen? Uh, for, 
Have you all seen uh, Neil Breen's whole masterclass things? Uh, yeah. we, we we watched a we watched a Red Letter Media on it uh, about yes, a month ago, yes. and we didn't watch the entire thing, but it was horrible, just like every one of his films ever has been. <laughs> they're amazing, but they're just they're fucking awful, and I it's kind of one of those gouge my eyes out kind of things. So uh, yeah, I can't years. believe he exists. <laughs> I can't like, believe he's, he's in the popular. same realm. <laughs> he's, he's in the same realm as Tommy Wiseau, where it's just like, oh, yeah. I don't know how how no, you're no. how you're a real human being. <laughs> so what, no, what, what, what was your second you recommendation? Know, wait, me? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh no, that was it. It was Twisted Pair. Oh, oh Twisted was, Pair. Uh, okay. Don't no. Yeah, Ian, don't recommend the, Twisted the Pair to people. Oh god! That's there's such a dramatic dramatic in the beginning where where no, uh, yeah, the, there's the exact same explosion sound and graphic yeah. that is just repeated insanely amount of times. Like, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, the, and then the, there's the, the the soldiers. Like, there's a clip. There's just you know some some clip that he definitely did not film but there's the soldiers that he just freezes he just pauses them and then he runs out in front of them and he says follow me and then and mm-hmm. like the video resumes yeah <laughs> it's it's just terrible <laughs> yeah but hilariously terrible yes, yes. jesus uh jacob how about you <laughs> uh i watched actually i watched this one last night it's called the uh, host Okay. It's on it's on Shutter, mm-hmm. but it's a uh, quarantine horror movie. So it's only okay. it's not even like an hour long, but it's it's kind of set up like unfriended. It's basically a oh, Zoom meeting nice. in the middle of the current quarantine we're going through. Mm-hmm. So there's even like um, references to wearing masks, COVID-19, stuff like that. Sure. And it's a bunch of friends getting together and uh, having a seance. But of course, uh, supernatural uh, things start happening and they start encountering uh, a very violent um specter sure and i think it's better than any one of those movies i watched like i thought i did not care for unfriended there was also another one that came out at the same time i like the implementation of the uh, zoom ui in this and they actually reference like some other like everyday social media products they actually say like instagram facebook all that stuff so there's like a very good sense of realism with it and uh even the ending credits like take place within the actual uh, zoom program. Mm-hmm. And then it's hard to, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I even think the scares are pretty uh, genuine and really well done. And uh, the, um, the actors in there are really good too, but yeah, it's only like an hour long, but I think it's uh, one of the best horror movies to come out in a l- little while. Interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. To check it out. I, I, you, you keep talking about shutter and I keep hearing about it and seeing previews for it on YouTube and I just need to get the app. I just need to do it. I mean, I, I yeah, love, love new horrors coming out. Um, Neil, what about you? Uh, well, my original recommendation before, uh, someone ruined it you was going to be Dr. Strange love <laughs> or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Uh, but you know, I was talking about it earlier and, uh, my recommendation is going to have to be cabin in the woods, uh, written mm-hmm. by Joss Whedon and directed by, um, Oh, what is his name now? I can't think of it. Uh, but it's, it's a great film. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. Always, always, always a classic. Uh, Gary? Uh, well, I'm going to give uh, two recommendations. So I decided to, one for explosions, huh. one for gore. Okay. But I wanted to challenge myself, so I wanted to pick one actor that's in both of them. So I'm, I went oh, with Mel Gibson. Nice. Um, okay. it's, it's an easy one. It's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon yeah, I know. and everything. I know. Uh, I didn't say it was going to be hard, but okay. uh, for the gore, it I'm sounded gonna, impressive at the beginning. I know. I know. I, I like to set it up like that. Okay. For the gore, I'm going to recommend Braveheart, which is a 1995 mm-hmm. film. Um, the uh, scene at the end of the movie, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. Um, he's uh, getting like cut up you don't really see much of the actual evisceration like you probably would in a modern day movie but like just his body movements and sound effects and everything Mm -hmm. and uh it it makes it a really like powerful scene especially since the uh king of england uh edward the longshanks is uh dying at the same time so it makes it a really um powerful scene whoever did the mixing for braveheart i mean and i pretty sure that year won the oscar but whoever did the mixing for that 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 might be the next saving private ryan the best job ever mm. ever done in a film because those war yeah. scenes just hearing like you said yeah just splitting the skin open and right. you see it going through the chain armor and yeah. yeah braveheart was a really well done movie um and then uh he also did another movie uh 
called We Were Soldiers. I think he did that in 2000 or 2001. It was about the uh, for- yeah. formation of the Air Cavalry. Um, and at the end of the movie, uh, they uh, have to summon in an airstrike and there's uh, a large explosion. So that's kind of what I was talking about when I said, you know, there's not a whole lot of explosions in that movie. Um, it, it kind of, they all kind of build toward the end, toward, uh, you know, that big Broken Arrow moment. Oh, Broken Arrow. That's another good movie with explosions. <laughs> that's kind not of, uh, sorry, Mel Gibson. No, no, I can't use that one. Damn it. Johnny, recommend Broken Arrow this week. Oh, okay. I recommend oh, not what Gary suggested. <laughs> um, nice. Okay. Um, for mine, I'm, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow your lead. Okay. I'll, I'll recommend one for both, and you guys are welcome to yeah. jump back in, too, if you'd like to add another one. Um, I want you to use Nicolas Cage n- as your actor. No. That, I, yes. I already had two films of mine. They don't share <laughs> similar actors, Gary. You can't do that to me. That's cheating. That's, okay, that's I'm going to name two out. movies, and they have... <laughs> The same production assistant helped out in oh, both films. What's their name? Reginald Val Monson. Okay. Oh, Reginald Val Monson. Oh, Reginald. Did you pick that up? No. No. No, <laughs> no I didn't. Soap dish. <laughs> so- <laughs> John Smith. No. Um, so, yeah. No. So, for the explosion factor, I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, Judgment Day, Terminator 2. Okay. I, I know it's... It's yeah. popular and, in my opinion, the greatest action film ever made. Just personal preference. More than Die Hard. More wow. than Die Hard. Okay. I love Die Hard, right. but Terminator Apparently 2 for don't. me is, okay. is number one. As, I'm, I'm with you, Johnny. Yeah, I, I love it, man. As far as if, if we're going to go based off just explosions and gunfights, um, and even, you know, for, for the time, the CGI, it, it held up okay. It held up all right. Yeah, you know, T-1000 was terrifying. He was, you know. Robert Patrick, like, mm. it's like one of the only movies I've ever seen him in, but he was just the perfect cast for that character. Um, yeah. But but that that one scene I talked about where L.A.'s being wiped out and you get the street, the citizen view, mm-hmm. uh, that's really, that really is disturbing. It, it really is. Even, like, thinking about it right now, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, nuclear war is not great. No, no, yeah, it's not. I'll I'll we never that. have to experience <laughs> it. Um, and then for... There's also the... You know, so for the gore, for the, it's okay. So for the gore fest, um, I, I will stick with my torture porn genre. Um, even though I was contemplating going with Shaun of the Dead, um, when when Neil you had said that earlier because it's such a good movie, um, but I I, I won't and I, I'm not going to recommend a Serbian film. I'm not going to recommend it. But <laughs> if you have a, if you have an ironclad stomach. Mm-hmm. And you're okay with the most offensive movie in the history of the world, mm-hmm. then then go ahead and watch it. Um, it's it's something with. I've only met a few people who have actually sat through the entire thing. I've seen scenes of it. I've never mm-hmm. watched the entire thing because I just honestly, it's one of the few movies I couldn't stomach. Mm-hmm. Um, and but what, uh, and what, which movie? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go away from that. Um, I would say yeah. You know, if you if you haven't seen, God, dude, if, if you haven't seen Human Centipede. You need to see it. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, if, and if, if, I, I say human centipede because it's not as as grotesque and as offensive as, as a Serbian film. Um, but it, I, I would watch Human Centipede not by yourself. I'd watch it with a friend or a spouse or a group of friends, people that you like your to kids, laugh with. Yeah. No, don't watch it with your kids. <laughs> but go through and and take a look at it with a group of people. Drink a lot. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm so sober for seven years and, but I'm, I'm saying drink a lot, do some type of drug mm-hmm. and, and go watch yeah, this thing. Case, bring some hand lotion and some, uh, yeah. napkins. Or bring, maybe bring some, some sandpaper if you want to watch the second one and you'll get that reference if you see it. Mm. Um, sorry, Gary. Um, um, I get it. But, uh, yeah, sorry, Ian as well for any of those that have seen it. Um, it's, it's just one of those movies that you have, you just, you, to understand the genre, you, you gotta watch it and laugh at it and make a drinking game out of it. Um, it. It is definitely an iconic watershed movie of that genre. It's a disturbing fucking film. Without a doubt. But it's so entertaining. Uh, yeah, did you guys want to throw any other ones out uh, if you only had a, a one to give? I guess for explosions, um, not movie, but the second season of uh, Umbrella Academy dropped on Friday. Yeah, and so that far. I'm really liking that mm-hmm. that second season so far. I'm on episode six or seven. Mm-hmm. It's it's really well written and uh, I like a lot of the character work in there so far compared to season one. And the action sequences are pretty cool. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah, you you you'd mentioned that a couple weeks ago that that series, and I, I still have yet to check it out. I gotta I gotta finish Fargo first, and then I'll get to yeah, that you soon. Like, like oh, Fargo is great, time. man. You got the wood feel chipper. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the, the series, not the movie. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, the the TV show Fargo. 
Um, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, Neil or Ian, did you guys want to throw another one in, or are you good? I mean, last I action did. hero. Last action hero was good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, perfect. Cool. But a cabin in the woods before cabin in the woods. Last action yeah. hero was mm-hmm. cabin in the woods before cabin in the woods. Yeah, because it was like a, it was a meta it's a meta self aware of, mm-hmm. of the action genre, oh, you know, that genre. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Okay, I thought you meant like the just like the synopsis were very like identical, and I was like, no, oh, no, I don't remember that. But. <laughs> even Scream One, even Scream One, and like Wes Craven's New Nightmares were both mm-hmm. uh, like self aware examinations of horror right. in itself. I mean, Scream was just doing nothing but making fun of slasher films, while also <laughs> yeah, it was one. Um, and so is Last Action Hero with action films, like all oh, the boy. all the dorky one-liners and stuff. And you had the kid there, like being the placement. And of course, there's like the the cool badass villain with like the glass eye. And it's just like yeah, which is a bomb too, by the way. Yeah, and he does it at the end. <laughs> but that movie seriously underrated. Like I think that movie oh yeah, the, absolutely. At the worst time, like if it came out today, I think it would be like really applauded. Yeah, yeah, last time it was on this podcast, I brought it up and I said that it came out the same the same week as Jurassic Park. Yep, and it nice. stank. Yeah, it stank good. All right, guys. Well, that is all the time we have for this week. Uh, please make sure to check out uh, Ian Webb's podcast, Movies So Bad They're Good, and his Facebook group, Movies So Bad They're Good, <laughs> Midnight Cult uh well, you finish it, Ian. I can't remember the last one. <laughs> Midnight Cold Classics and Camp. There you go. The movie's so bad they're good. Midnight Cold Classics and Camp. I was on a hey, roll can, for can a I, uh, Oh, just real quick. Uh, can, can I uh, make a uh, recommendation slash plug? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it brief. I swear. Um, it's um, so my co-host on movies so bad they're good. Seth, he has another podcast that he runs called Who's Next. It's about gaming, and he has an episode on there. Uh, why is violence in video games so entertaining? And so this reminded me of that. So I, uh, it was actually out, a really yeah. good episode. Okay. Yeah, definitely check that What's out. They that had called? a very good deep discussion on it. Right. Uh, the podcast mm-hmm. is Who's Next Gaming. Okay, gotcha. cool. Or okay. just Who's Next. Perfect. And the name of the episode is Why Is Violence So Damn Entertaining? Okay. A very fitting title. Uh, and we also want to thank uh, Jacob Johnson, uh, host of the podcast, Reese and Jacob versus Evil. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, for Neil, Gary, and myself, you guys stay classy. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.